Folks, I'm talking to my friend Sean Foyt. He's in a hotel room. Sean, uh, <laughs> you need to get out into the streets, man. Stop hiding in this hotel room. What's up with that? You, you just said something that reminded me. You probably know this because you're a student of revivals and everything, but um, I've written a number of times of the story of George Whitfield. Uh, I right. wrote about him in my book, If You Can Keep It, and then he's one of the seven men in my book, Seven More Men, and his story is kind of strangely similar, right? Like the, he's, he's preaching in churches, and then he's forced to go outside the church and when he goes outside the church and starts preaching like in a graveyard or in a whatever, something happens, and it leads to what can only be called revival. I mean, it's the, it's the first great awakening. Um, there, there is something interesting, right, that COVID would force you to do something or would open the opportunity for you to do something that who would ever do? Who would ever go to the Golden Gate Bridge? Who would ever do this? And it kind of launches this movement. You find yourself doing this everywhere. You're doing this in Miami uh, in a couple of days, December 31st. Um, and then in 2022, you're going to continue doing this all around the country. Um, but there has been a lot of pushback. I mean, that's what's the, the, the documentary. Is it called Super Spreader? What's it called? Yeah, I, I, we're still working on the title, but right now, super spreader has kind of been. I think, to the yeah, top. Jesus Christ super spreader, like Jesus Christ superstar. Um, so, <laughs> you, uh, but you have to see that because this is unprecedented, there's something new going on. COVID caused this to happen, and I and I know that it. I just know that it gives you hope that God is doing something. You don't need to know exactly what it is. You just follow. You're just in the middle of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't, I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined what we're seeing in America, both the tyrannical nature of the government, the division, uh, the, the burning of the cities, all that kind of stuff. But yet in the, also, I mean, Eric, we have seen, I mean, we, in the last year, we've, we've gathered 480,000 people to worship outside. Okay. We have seen over, I would say over probably 30,000, maybe 40,000 people come to Jesus, you know, in cities across America. We have baptized thousands of people. We've seen uh, drug addicts saved, set free, delivered. We've seen um, protesters that came to antagonize, you know, uh, crumple to the ground at the altar. I'm, it's amazing the power of God that's being unleashed right now. And, and it's like, it, it's it's almost like it could have only happened under these circumstances, you know, and, and I've seen a lot of this stuff overseas for many years as, as a missionary in different nations, but I've never seen it in my own nation. And so I, it gives me great hope and peace and, and optimism that, that God is doing, is moving in this nation. The gates of hell will not prevail. No one can stop it. The harder that they try, the harder these guys try to shut things down, the more it just grows. Well, that's that's what's so beautiful, and I think that look. Let's be honest; it didn't need to be that way, right? When when the powers yeah. that be, when tyrants, despots, I'm not going to say Joe Biden by name, but uh, I could, I could have, but I did, I chose not to. But when people uh, they they're addicted to power, you know, uh, King Herod, you see them right. do things, and then the question is, what's the response going to be? When, 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 when Hitler or Stalin decide to do, whenever leaders come against freedom and free people, the question is, what's the response? And my theory is that, you know, if you, uh, it, well, it's kind of like, you know, never poke a sleep, sleeping bear. I mean, if, if you want to win, if you're on the side of power, you better crush uh, because if you don't, you may just wake up people and say, hey, wh hey, what's going on? Hey, we better fight. That's what I see happening in America. There are tons of people that they're just going about their business, but, but the, the government intrusion, the, the, the power grabs, uh, the silencing of dissent, people just said, wait a minute, wait a minute. So there are tons of people waking up, uh, mm -hmm. and if things had continued as they were just a few years ago, those people would still be sleeping. So a good yeah. thing is happening. I, I always think it's like yeah. the, you know, uh, the, 
the, the, the dark forces have, have awakened a sleeping giant, and now they're in trouble yeah. because a sleeping giant, he's yeah. awake, and he realizes what's going on, right. and he's going to fight back. So that's kind of what I see happening with you is, is that you guys yeah. are you're out there. <laughs> stuff is happening. If COVID had never happened, this would not be happening. No, I mean, 100%. And I think that, you know, we, it's like we, we've, been wa- we've been awakened. People are now grappling with, you know, coming out of COVID, like, what am I making of my life? You know, uh, why, why, why am I in the place that I'm in right now? They're, they're searching for God unlike ever before. Um, everything that can be shaken has been shaken. And um, God's moving in the midst of it. And so, you know, all of the, 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 the wokeness and all that kind of stuff, that's all bred out of people that are bored out of their mind and they don't have any battle to fight. And they don't have, you know, it's like all that kind of stuff, all the confusion, all of that. It, it, it's, but now we are waking up and we're like, no, actually, we're in a spiritual war right now. We're in a spiritual battle for the next generation, a spiritual battle, battle over our nation. Um, I can say that because I've almost been to 70 nations. There's nowhere on the planet like America. And there is a fight for the soul of the nation spiritually right now. Well, you know, as I say over and over and over again, something happened in, in the last decades where it became unfashionable in elite circles to love America. It's that it's that simple. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't always the case, but it has happened and it's now trickled down into the middle of the country. And you think you cannot survive if you don't love what is good and true and fight for it, and if you're not willing to die for it. If once you lose that, you've lost the will to live. You've lost the will to fight. Yeah. And that's kind of the battle. It, it, it's like the you know the the elite culture is there, but in a funny way, it led to these overreaches, which I think are waking a lot of people up and saying, "What what, what was I thinking? Why did I think it was okay uh, to keep going as I was going?" Yeah, I mean, their classic example, you know, when I was out in, in Arizona, you meet all these people, like there was a girl that owned a salon, was super left wing, like crazy fanatical left wing out of Los Angeles. When the COVID shutdowns happened, her business got shut down, she got red pilled, and realized what was happening, what was taking place, but it, it didn't just stop there. Then she began to see the spiritual elements behind it. Okay, and hold, she began- hold on. This is okay. I want to. We're going to a break. When we come back, I want to dig into that. We've got a final segment. Sean Foy, folks, don't go away. <laughs> hey, folks, just a few minutes left with our friend Sean Foy. Sean, you were just saying something that strikes me as the typical narrative that that I am seeing. Something yeah. is happening. There are people. You just referred to this woman who has a hair salon. Her business yeah. gets shut down. So she starts kind of waking up to what, yeah. what the heck is going on. And it doesn't just stop politically. In other words, because yeah. there are a lot of people, I think they weren't ideologues. They just, they had, right. ended up being over here, over here, over here. But something happened. So for the first time, maybe yeah. in their lives, they're really thinking about how this stuff works. And they're saying, wait a right. second, this is wrong, this is wrong. But you're saying in this case, and I think in many cases, it ultimately leads to the spiritual dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was really cool because, you know, she, she hunted me down in the lobby in at this hotel and she's telling me her story. And, you know, when everything shut down, you know, she was far left, has been her whole life. Uh, but then she started to notice, okay, you're shutting my business down, but you're letting this open. And, 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 and she kind of started to, you know, make her really curious. And then she, she wound up, you know, as I mentioned, getting red pilled, seeing that the, the you know, the, the craziness behind uh, the far left. And she showed up at a Let Us Worship gathering, and she didn't really know what it was. She knew there was a spiritual dynamic, but she didn't know that it was like, she thought maybe we're going to take a stand to open businesses. Well, she got there. She ended up getting saved. She ended up getting filled with the Spirit. She gave her life to Jesus, and she, like, launched a ministry. And she was just telling me, like, through tears in the lobby, like, how that moment— that moment of awakening to the darkness of what was happening through the tyrannical leadership led her to let us worship, which led her to Jesus. And now she's like unstoppable. She's taking souls and starting stuff. And it's amazing. 